Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and uh, today I will be doing another reaction video and this is going to be a reaction to The Last of Us Part 2 Inside the World and uh, this is of course a new episode that PlayStation have released and it is part of the mini series that they have been doing for The Last of Us Part 2 and they're going to keep releasing new episodes until The Last of Us Part 2 gets released on June 19th. But uh, anyways, guys, uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into this new episode of The Last of Us Part 2, and this is called Inside the World, part of the miniseries, and uh, let's get into this. The world of The Last of Us is dangerous. Unless you're living in a protected area, there is something lethal around every corner. Right. Once you venture out of your home, you're in danger. And yep. where we're taking the story and where we're taking Ellie is like each step of the way, she's putting herself in more and more danger to bring these people to justice. I would say that the world, in every sense of the word, is bigger than The Last of Us Part One both in scale and the amount of physical space that exists for you to explore, for you to encounter other people. Yeah, this route has its perks. Our hope is to make every corner a challenge, make every decision hard for Ellie. And so we do that not just in the gameplay you experience, but also in the level design. So part of that is making certain experiences really hostile, be it through weather or through rivers or or craggy cliffs or slick snow but we also use it in terms of how blind the player is like what can they see how safe do you feel can you see a threat coming around the corner you never know if the bullets in your gun are going to be enough you never know if you can stop and bandage your arm you can never fully breathe and right. we want you to be in alignment with ellie who can never fully breathe when she experiences this trauma right that for jackson sense. specifically we wanted to make it feel like a very close-knit kind of community that's focused on family, focused on sustainable ways of living. I obviously have the hydroelectric dam generator that's powering the town, so we have, you know, electricity in Jackson, which is not something that maybe players would expect to see in the world. But given that we're further in time, we wanted to show that there are certain people dedicated in the world to rebuilding a life that doesn't revolve around killing people and, and scavenging. As you walk around the town, you can hear kids laughing. You could see um, people going into restaurants and eating. And it's a very kind of tranquil town. Now, we know there's all these horrible things happening outside the walls, but they've been able to protect the innocence of, of this town. Jackson, in many ways, represents what is at stake for our characters, uh, a life of peace and relative comfort, uh, a life where you can fall in love, a place where children can play and it's okay. And I think, you know, when we were looking at building out Jackson, it's like, okay, how many of those moments can we represent? What's awesome about the world of The Last of Us is it shows just how precious the things that we take for granted in our everyday lives, how precious those things really are. Right, okay. That makes sense. Seattle, compared to Jackson, is uh, very different. It's more of a war zone, I would say. Part of the interesting thing with Seattle or the Pacific Northwest is that there's all this rain and all this foliage and wildlife, and it's this very lush area that if someone were to settle down, it'd be a pretty good place to settle down just as far as the kind of fruit you can scavenge, the animals you can hunt. And then because it is so lush, because it is so um, teeming with resources is why there are multiple factions trying to fight over those resources. One faction you run into in Seattle is the Washington Liberation Front. When the outbreak happened, the military took some pretty drastic actions and quarantined parts of the country. And this was their way of protecting the population that has survived this horrendous outbreak. And because of that, it led to rise of these resistance groups and in the first game we saw the fireflies 
And we heard about other groups, and in this game we get to see, here's another group that rose called the Washington Liberation Front that was able to defeat the army and thereby take over a lot of their equipment. And they're this very militaristic faction. And at the same time, you have the Seraphites. And they're a religious group that also came up out of the outbreak that believed that the pandemic came because of sin. They're trying to reset the world and return it to a better place than it was. In The Last of Us, almost any group that has survived this long has to be dangerous. Um, if you're not dangerous, you're not gonna survive. You're gonna become someone's victim. And the two factions you run into are both very dangerous. The WLF has a lot of military equipment that they're able to use to defend the area, and they have large numbers, whereas the Seraphites are very quiet and stealthy and able to use the large amount of foliage to their advantage and they fight more in this kind of guerrilla warfare. How you deal with them is going to be different because they have different language, they have different communication style, the scars will whistle to each other with this different language. And they have some of the stuff that you have. You have a bone arrow, they can hit you with arrows and impale you and you have to pull the arrow out. They have big sledgehammers and melee weapons. The WLF, they have trained dogs that will sniff and attack you. Dogs are a new level of threat that Ellie hasn't had to negotiate before. And hopefully they create a new complicated choice for the player. We saw in them an opportunity to, to challenge people's perceptions of what a combat setup can be. We wanted to find really hard choices. The dogs themselves have names. They're called out by their owners. We wanted every setup to be challenging. Oh, that smell. Looks like Infected did this. Oh, God. How many do you think it would take to bring down a moose? Infected are still a threat in this world. Oh, wow. We wanted to take first our basic classes that we had in the first game and say, okay, how do we, what's different about them now? So we'll have scenarios where way more runners, like we can have hordes sometimes of runners coming after you and it might be about just escaping because the odds are just overwhelming. You know, this thing just keeps mutating. There's, there's certain evolutions of infected that you haven't seen before, certain new classes. There's the shamblers, which kind of have these exploding acid clouds when you get near them. You're running down a hallway and you have to suddenly make a decision like, oh, do I want to take the damage and go through this cloud or find some other route or go back the way I came? And it kind of forces you to on the fly kind of make new decisions about how you're going to deal with uh, the threat behind you or potentially in front of you. So again, it's about how do we make fighting against infected intelligence. So when you come on a space, you're listening to audio cues because different classes will make different sounds. If you just go in guns blazing and throw caution in the wind, you could easily get overwhelmed and regret that strategy. That level of uncertainty and instability is something our characters have to carry with them every day as they go out into the world to protect the people they love most. And that threat is banging on their door every day. I really hope you make it. I like this episode. This is a this was a really good episode. I like this one. So, yep, so that's it. Um I got to say they really they really they really took this game to the next level though. They really have because they are making it a little bit more realistic. And, you know, they're making it a little bit more, you know, ambitious, you know, and brutal. And just like, it just, you know, sort of, it just add, you know, it just, you know, it just makes sense, you know. It just totally makes sense of how they just want to give you a more dangerous world of The Last of Us Part 2. Like, they just want to make you feel very immersed in this game to make you really feel like you're in the you, it just they're trying to make you really feel like you know that you're really there like that's what i mean when i when i say like they're trying to immerse you 
Like, they're... I gotta say, like, they really went all out with this game. They're taking this game to a whole nother level, making it more realistic, making it more, you know, ambitious, you know, making it more dramatic. And just more... Like I said, they're... They're truly giving you a true experience for this game. Like, that's what they're trying to say. Like, they just... They just want to give you a true experience of how, you know, these characters live in a dangerous world. So we're going to, so basically what they're saying is that, you know, they want you, they want to make you feel like, you know, you're really in this world where characters have to, you know, deal with these, you know, infected creatures because of an outbreak. And they truly want to make you feel like, you know, you're building a relationship with characters. Like, I just love how they're doing that with this game i really like that very impressive like i said this game is going to be amazing we are only 15 days away uh from the release of the last was part two because the last was part two of course comes out on june 19th and you know you know you know i've already got my uh copy pre-ordered i already got mine pre-ordered and uh i already and uh, i already told you guys a few videos back that um I'm getting the special edition of The Last of Us Part 2. And, yeah. Like I said, it's going to be a very, very intense game. It's going to be really, like, really intense. Like, a whole nother level of intensity. But, uh, anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Get a like, comment, subscribe. And, uh, leave it down in the comment section below. What did you think of this episode? And, uh, for their, for their, uh, miniseries. And, uh. I'll see you guys later. I'll see you guys and peace out.